Christ, I really, really underestimated how much time it'd take to get the old under seal off. That's, that's six hours. Like. Now then YouTube, boy do I have an exciting video for you today. Do we have an exciting video for you today? Yes we do. Because it's time to underseal the Integra like she's never been undersealed before. This is going to be a video I'm going to film over hopefully two days, but most likely three days, Trez does, yeah. Our jobs for today are to get that Integra on that there DOS poster ramp, yeah? And we're going to scratch away at all the underseal that's on it, hopefully not find any more rusty holes. I'm pretty sure it's just surface rust that's left on it now. Um, but yeah, we're going to scratch away at everything from the bulkhead backwards. We're not doing anything kind of engine bay-esque or anything like that. We're leaving that, but everything from the bulkhead backwards underneath the car we're going to scratch it back to bare metal. So yeah, I've had a lot of assistance from, from the Discord picking products because you know, I want to do this once and I want to do it right and then I want to do it again on the E46. So we're kind of testing out uh, the method, you know, the Magnus method. Anyway, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I always planned to, but you know, I was leaning towards just throwing the car back together, weren't I? And yeah, we found more rust just trying to put the fuel tank on. So we'll only be wasting time if, if we just throw it together. So we're going to spend a couple of days and a couple hundred quid and we're going to try and sort it out for good, hopefully, or for at least another 10 years or so. So our first jobs are to get uh, this blue. Uh, I'm big, I'm blue, I'm heavy. And my brakes stick on. So first job, get the M3 out of the way. That'll do. Well, our first problem, how are we going to steer it? We've got a steering column, we've got a steering rack, but we don't have a steering wheel. Uh, ideally, could we find in at least one or two, maybe I think we need two as a minimum. Little M5 screws to hold that on, then we can we can turn. Oh. Is that connected? Oh, it is connected. It's just the. I think they must have took the column off to do the cage. Obviously, it's never been back together since that happened. Uh, DC 5s looking clean, Matt. You've been uh, giving it a wee wash, have you? Yeah. You got any M5 screws? Need some, excuse me, I need some M5, excuse me, I need some M5 screws. You got any you can? Hmm. Uh, it's not quite MSA illegal, but it'll do. Might tighten them bolts up and then we're ready to try and push it over, but the tires are a wee bit flat. They're only flat at the bottom, so let's see how we get on. This is not going to be a fun task, but let's just assess the area first. We've got some rusty sills, We've got some weird metal plates here, and, and that's been plated, hasn't it? When was that plated? I don't know. Now I tried to put the uh, legs of the ramp as far in as I could get them. So we've got room to see both these areas on both sides because they're the most concerning bits. Got some new seams here as well, which I've not used before. Oh, that's quite a rusty part there, isn't it? Let's just stick to what we know for now. So there's a, you know, this sill doesn't look so good, does it? But I think <laughs> we'll see what it's like underneath. And the rest of it's not too bad. Still on this side, not too bad, not too bad. We've got some built hamber. I don't know how you say that, but we've got some of that 
uh, cavity wax, which everyone bums about for the the sills and you know inside here and stuff. This was the concerning part, which made me realise that we need to do something and you know do it before we put a fuel tank on. So this is the worst bit that I could see, but we've also got all the rust going on all the way around here. So we're going to take the rear suspension off anyway, so we can get into the the rear wheel wells. That'll be our first task. The really rusty parts before, where there were surprises and there were holes, were here and here, this area. And the same on the other side. But yeah, what we can do is start scratching it back and see what lays beneath. So, we'll see, I'm not going to video every step of that, but I'll pick up the camera in a little bit. It's going to be a messy job, this, isn't it? It's going to be a messy job. Well, we're not worried about this either yet. This is, don't worry about this, it's fine. That's just steel doing what steel does. Uh, the tools I've got for the job, I've got four of these. I've got a couple as well that, you know, have the um, wire wheel going forward rather than the outside. But these fit onto the grinder or they also fit onto um, these ones, the M14 ones, also fit onto my uh, rotary polisher, which has variable speed, which I'm going to probably use that rather than the grinder. And these ones do go on the grinder and they're just paint removers basically. We'll do as much as we can with this and then the last um, kind of scrub up will be done by these pads. So yeah. suspension's off. I'm going to start in the wheel arches I think. If you remember there's a bit of wheel arch nastiness already here which we did some red oxide on but the wheel arches themselves aren't too bad overall but we did find some didn't we so we want to scratch it all back. There's a bit of rot here look which has been patched up before but we'll scratch it all back. Um, the outside of the body is going to get done but it's going to get done by someone who knows what they're doing but I'm pretty sure we can have a good go at this uh, underside stuff so yeah get the scratching discs out and have a go get my stool out get my goggles on i have invested in some ppe as well you stay there safe distance away and yeah let's get dirty i'm already a bit dirty but let's get even worse Right, I've been at this now for at least half an hour. All I seem to have done is make a right mess and not really make much progress. I mean, it's taking ages just do a little bit, but the bits that were rusty around the, the strut top and around here, they've cleaned straight up those areas. So the only kind of rusty bits, which are not gonna be getting cleaned up are the bits where it's completely deteriorated away here but that's not important, we could probably just chop it off if we want to make it look neat. I'm gonna try another one of these uh, wheels, but on the grinder where it'll spin a bit faster and see how different it is, because this is maximum 6,000 RPM, I think 3,000, right. So that's only gonna spin at 3,000 RPM where the grinder will be a lot more than that. And they say they can go maximum of 12,500 RPM, so maybe with more rippums, I'll get more done, but let's find out. This is some proper dirty work. I've been going for about an hour and a half and I've just about got this wheel arch area, something like 
in an hour and a half. I mean, there's still a good bit of under seal still on it here and there, but I still need to just get into this bit. I just took the bolts out now so I can get in. I've not made any nasty discoveries apart from this little hole at the top, but everything else is all good. Still a bit of scratching to do up there, but overall, not too bad. Got rid of a bit of the surface rust on the on the outside as well, just for the laugh. But man, this is exhausting work. Like my uh, arms are all cramping up and stuff. I don't know if it'll be easier on the underside or not, but certainly the wheel arches have been a right pain in the ass. So far, so good though. No major rust has been found. No no brown stuff turning up. So we're good. Just to keep on it. Well, I've done as much as. I can do for today. It's definitely uh, going to be a free day, or at least I think, at least. Christ, I really, really underestimated how much time it'd take to get the old under seal off, even with the you know, twisted knot on the on the angle grinder. Now there's still a bit of a way to go on this side, and I'm finding a lot more rust than uh, than the other side, which I guess makes sense with it being on the on the side of the you know, there's more water, I guess, on the on the passenger side, on the on the near side, let's say, yeah, near the near the pavement. Um, so yeah, still a, still a long way to go, but I've got a, a, an appointment tonight. I've got to make. I've still got to tidy up my me, uh, me Myanmar too, and me put that big pig somewhere. So I'm gonna put a plug in it for today. I'll come back up as early as I can tomorrow and carry on. So I'll see you then. Guten Morgen, it's the car off the t-shirt. Well, I'm wearing a jumper today, right? I've covered my arms and legs, unlike yesterday. I got in the shower after uh, working on this yesterday and it wasn't good, like, I was so dirty. And I only got one and a half wheel arches done. So we're gonna be busy today. I've got here nice and early-ish. It's about 10 o'clock, but it's actually bang on the money, 10 a.m. And we really need to have the primer thrown down today, right? So we need to finish off scratching all the under seal off underneath and then bang the primer down, right? Now I've brought all the rest of the products with me today. Everything's arrived in good time. So as I said yesterday, this was the Discord build. Keyhole was his name, not, no, Key World was his name, not Keyhole. Right, I got it right the second, third time. This man helped me out, pick pick a lot of things. So if it's all shite, then we can all blame him, right? Key world, yeah? Send his, uh, if you think any of this is shite, then let him know. But to be fair, I cheaped out on the body seal. He, he told me a better one, but I'm sure it'll be all right. Yeah. Anyway, what have we got here then? This is the primer stuff. Jotton. I just like the color of it, just the, the tin, just like some nice design, isn't it? Hey, what's going on there? Are you a penguin or what? I don't know. Yeah, I guess you'll never know. Might be a whale. You can spray it or you can brush it. We're gonna brush it. I've got some posh, expensive brushes. I've got some four inch and some two inch to uh, gob that on. We're gonna brush it on. We're not gonna spray it. And then over the top of that, eventually we'll be putting the um, Gravitex, which is just uh, white. How, how much of a different white is it? Yeah, it's pretty bright white compared to the Dusty DC too, but if it looks absolutely awful, we can nip to Halfords and get some uh, Rover Diamond White, I think it was called, what I used to paint my wheels in back in the day. We can go and get some of that and just gob over the top of it. It'll be fine. Um, but I'm sure it won't look too bad. It'll look fresh, won't it? Because it'll be white as it can. I think the front stuff here, the crash bar and all that, I think I painted that in body colour, so, um, but I think this stuff is not, I think that's just white, although it does look kind of body colour, doesn't it, so, I don't know, I can't remember, but anyway, I've still got a lot to do, going to be scratching away at all the under seal for probably most of today, but we can't stop, you know, even if my arms fall off, we can't stop. Right, let's just get cracking then, I'll let you know how I get on. Oh, MR2 fans, I'm not doing a video on this. I got some new Lambda sensors. Following the disappointment of the Dark Side Dino, I managed to get some new Lambda sensors. And I never forgot, I got some scales as well to weigh the paint. Just some cheap ones. Come with some very interesting looking batteries. Royale, definitely not 
uh, Durac cell, definitely Royale Plus. <laughs> Just a quick safety notice to everyone. I bought these goggles, brought some brand new ones. And the shite, really shite, they're cheap, they're like a fiver a pair. So, but you know, this is a lot cheaper than that as well. So they're not like stupid cheap, like 99p, like some of them. About a fiver each, shite. Can't get it to see around my nose, so when I've got the real dusty stuff with the regular wire wheel on the go on the drill, just fucking going all over my eyes, man. A fucking shit bag. Yeah, it keeps fucking getting dust in my eye because it's not sealing around my beak. There's a big gap between the goggles and my beak, man. So yeah, don't buy this trash. And if anyone ever quotes you to do this and you think, Christ, that's a lot, just pay them. Just pay them. Save yourself the effort. You don't want to be doing this yourself. Whatever man does this for a job must be hard as nails, because I keep having to stop every couple of minutes or so just to rest my arms. I'm, I'm just about done on the wheel arch slider. I'm going to leave it for a little bit, give it a second pass. I need to give everything a second pass anyway, but it's just needs a little bit of cleaning up, but I'm getting quite annoyed trying to do these bits up here. And I never really covered the, the rust repair work that it had, but you can get an idea if we come on this, for example. So this panel here, yeah, there's a panel there, there's another panel there, there's another panel there, and there's another panel, some welding here, another panel with some welding here. Basically the whole inner arch was rotten to bits. And as well as that, that runs down the sill. And this here, next to the toe arm, this is all rotten. This is all fresh metal, or it was a couple of years ago. I plan to do all this pretty sharpish after getting it back, but you know, here we are, probably three years, if not more later. There's quite a lot of little holes like this on the car. There's some there as well in the middle which I should really be plugging. There is a welder over there. Do I just have a go? See what happens? Might have to. Just gonna show scraping this bit of surface rust off which started this whole thing. Here I am, just about three hours in, day two, and just not having a real good time here. I mean, this was all to be expected, right? Mucky job, but making really slow progress. And I've kind of worked out why I think these things really ineffective after a while. It'd be nice if you could reverse the polarity maybe on the angle grinder on the plug and make them run backwards. Might run a bit better that way, but yeah, they, they're all right for a little bit and then they just go off and then, you know, you've got such a little surface area anyway that it's actually contacting then it just takes so long. So I had to go with these ones as well, which are these blue ones. Now these are advertisers, paint removers, right? And you can get loads of these and I made sure I went for a, a branded one, right? I went for a branded one, but... Yeah, they do a really good job, and they're, they're probably faster than, than this um, at getting down to bare metal anyway, once the top shit's gone. But the problem is, they just don't last at all. Um, don't know, maybe I'm going too hard on everything, trying to make progress too fast, but I've got some stuff I need to do on the MR2, which is spark plugs, and these lads are working on the combo again, they brought this bit of sheet alloy. I'm gonna make a, a lid, a roof for my airbox as well, but. Yeah, I'm gonna take a break for an hour or so, but I'll just lift the ramp up and show you just how much I've done in, I don't know, probably three hours yesterday and another three hours today. Six hours maybe, with power tools. Right, so anywhere where you can see bits of white, then that means there's still some under seal on. But most of this wheel arch is good. Little bits to do at the top there, which I couldn't quite reach properly. I need to get the wire wheel on the drill. Kind of most of the spare wheel well area is done, but there's still some hard to reach bits, which, you know, hard to reach. This still needs doing, and this wheel arch is pretty much done, but as you can see, still the odd bit of white that needs. Just, 
you know, doing quick first pass now. What's my idea? I thought, you know, we'll do a quick first pass and then we'll come back and finish it off. But that's that's six hours. Like you know. It looks a bit better with a torch on it, doesn't it? Now the good news is I've not found anything too nasty, so that's great. The only reason it's taking so long, I think, is that we've got under seal at the bottom, but then we've got wax oil and all sorts in between, and then a final layer of this black kind of sealant stuff over the top. I can't really show you that well, but if you kind of look where this black is and where this metal is here, you can see a bit of a lip. It's thick, it's a, you know, maybe a millimetre, pretty thick all in so yeah it's definitely been a lot more effort than what i thought and with that i think i'm gonna have to draw the line just at this section for now but yeah on with the mr2 for a little bit and we'll come back to it this is not going to be coming at mr2 video I promise but just thought you'd like to know just went to um look at these lambda sensors so the exhaust manifold's held on with five um, nuts, yeah? And this one was just bare, and the exhaust was leaking. Now, the error code that we had for lambda sensors on the Dynoman's computer at Darkside, I think they were to do with the heater circuit, so maybe not too relevant to, you know, this problem, but the exhaust is definitely leaking, and if, if air can get out, air can probably get in, right, and mess up with the, mess up with the reading, although, the AFR was was well out, so can that really have that much difference? I have definitely had codes in the past for Lambda sensors, so I'm going to chuck the new ones in anyway, because how much harm can it do, really? Hopefully none. But we'll chuck the new Lambda sensors on anyway and tighten all these up. I don't think I talked them up, so probably my fault. But I'll talk them all up and then make a little roof for that. And then back on with that mess over there. Messy Joe. Mm. None of the five nuts were talked up. Um, they weren't loose by any means, but they're meant to be 51 Newton meters, which is quite high for M8. Had to give them all quite a few turns, so yeah, maybe she'll perform a bit better now. I mean, maybe a waste of time buying the Lambda sensors, but you know, I never changed them, so uh, I'm going to change them anyway. Why not? Preventative maintenance as Kevin might say look at this bullshit and pigtails are all way shorter than what they should be this is some real bullshit this one just about reaches but a bit too much tension on them what you'd want so that needs extending this one Christ about 10 centimeters away you wouldn't believe how long this is taking me I'd tell you, but you wouldn't believe me. If I get any error codes now, I'm gonna be fuming. All right, four hours ago, that's four hours ago, I told you we were gonna take a little break from the Integra to work on the MR2 a little bit. Four hours ago. I don't know how it took four hours either, but this is all, I mean, this is less than ideal, yeah? not what I wanted to do, I wanted to feed it all the way around, but where the pipe comes for the um, extinguisher is a bit in the way. And I've got a love hole here for where that pipe used to go, but now it's gonna ride on top, so. Maybe, um, maybe it'd be good to have a little breather hole to get some air through that way, maybe. We can pretend that we planned it if you want. So we have sort of more of an air box now as well. We have lambda sensors that work, that are guaranteed to work, even though they might stop working during the vase because of the soldering, because I couldn't find any crimps. But we won't worry about it. Also the engine's making a bit of a grumble. I think it might be the clutch, but unconfirmed, there's something something going on uh, but i'm just going to throw it back together anyway and get back over on that integra we've got 
I've been here a while now, but we'll get a, a little bit more time on that before we go. Right, I just had a power hour, but I'm flagging now. I've been here a long time today, so I'm gonna call it right. You could say we've scratched the surface, yeah? We've scratched the surface. All the surfaces have been scratched. I'm still missing some bits. Some areas are hard to get to. Um, some areas, the ramp's in the way. I don't know if to try and move the ramp further down the sill and hope everything's all right. If not, I can axle stand off the towing eye, but then, you know, I've got limited access from there, but I have to think of something. <clears throat> think of something tomorrow for that. But we still need to give this a final cut. There's still a bit of ceiling up there, look, which I've missed. Um, I need to give another cut. The best ones are them blue ones, but they just don't last very long. I don't know if I'll be able to get the full thing done with, with what I've got, the tools I've got, which will be a nightmare, right? They seem to fade really fast, the, the blue pads. They're good, but then they, they go, you know. There's a... Uh, Definitely not enough for, for what I need to do, I don't think, but we'll see how we get on anyway. I've got tomorrow to at least get some primer down on this. So it may end up being a multi-part video, this. This might be part one, I think it's gonna end up being. Because we'll probably just have time to get primer on it tomorrow and then I'll have to set off for, for Donington and get everything sorted, which is the day after, so. I'll see you up here tomorrow though, try and get up here nice and early again, we'll at least Try and get some primer down on this, and that'll be part one. We'll come back and maybe part two will be getting this primed and then, I don't know, we'll see. But Integra videos, I know you like the Integra videos. Yeah, I'll pick this up tomorrow though, see you then. We'll carry on for now. I didn't put the face mask on for that one. I always wanted a five o'clock shadow. Like Homer. Fucking hell. Yeah, dirty work. I'm a fool for doing your dirty work. <laughs>